Women have always played a significant role in the history of the Great Republic of Haiti. As a token of my appreciation, and in honor of Women's Month, I want to highlight five women that, not only have major impacts, but changed the courses of our history, forever. Again, if you have not subscribed, to my YouTube channel, Mystery of History, I want you to take the time to do so right now, for more exclusive content. Number 5. Catherine Flan. Catherine is regarded as one of the greatest symbols of the Haitian Revolution, and independence. Catherine Flan, was a seamstress with her own workshop, and apprentices. She was the goddaughter of the legendary emperor, Jean-Jacques Dessalines himself. On May 18, 1803, a few months before the Battle of Vertiers, sensing victory in the air, the leader of the revolution, Jean-Jacques Dessalines cut apart a French tricolor, with his saber, demonstrating his desire to break away from France. He gave the pieces to Flan, who stitched them back together, while leaving out the central white strip. The blue and red stripes, represented a union between the blacks, and the mulatto citizens of Haiti. On the flag, inscribed a phrase, that will fuel the revolution until the end. Liberté ou la mort, which translates to, freedom or death. Her birthplace, R.K., Haiti, became known as Flag Town, and the day she sewn the flag, became Flag Day, which is widely celebrated by all Haitians, and Haitian descendants all over the world. Number 4. Sanité Belair. Sanité, is known for her bravery, strength and honor in the Haitian Revolution. Born a free woman in Verrets, Haiti, Sanité had the option to live a life outside of conflict, and war. Seeing how others that looked like her were being treated, she decided to join the Haitian army, and became a lieutenant, under the cunning general, Toussaint Louverture. She married the nephew of Louverture, General Charles Belair in 1796, and they both continued their fight for freedom, under the French oppression. Sanité was captured during a surprise attack by the French army, after a long battle, in the Artibonite department. Fear of being separated from his wife, the General Charles Belair, decided to turn himself into the French as well. Charles was sentenced to death by firing squads, and Sanité by decapitation, because she was a woman. She watched her husband's execution, where he calmly asked her to die bravely. She went to her own execution as calm as her husband, refusing to be blindfolded. Instead of decapitation, Sanité, successfully asserted the right to an honorable soldier's death, by musketry, and standing before their muzzles, she cried, vively bete. A bas clavage, which translates, long live freedom. Down with slavery. Sanité Belair, died a hero's death, and was a soldier till the end. Number 3. Dede Bazal. Today's story depicts the metal states, of what young women, faced in the wicked institutions, of slavery at the time. Dede was born in Cap Francais, Haiti, to two enslaved parents. As a teen, Dede was raped by her master repeatedly, which traumatized her throughout her whole adult life. Dede worked as a sutler to the Haitian army, which was headed by the general Jean-Jacques Dessalines. She admired the general and everything he stood for. She watched as some of her family members joined the army, and was optimistic for the future. After witnessing the slaughter, of her family members by the French, her mental state took a turn for the worse, and started deteriorating vastly. Today is remembered in history, because after the Emperor Jean-Jacques Dessalines was brutally assassinated, and dismembered, she was the only one that gathered his remains in a sack, and transported them to the cemetery to bury them. Even though Dede was suffering from mental illness, she still remembered General Dessalines, and felt like he deserved an honorable burial, for that we salute her. Number 2. Marie-Jean La Martinier. Marie-Jean was a Haitian soldier, and a dazzling beauty. She was known to fight in a male uniform, standing along the fort's ramparts, bearing both a rifle, and a sword. She served at the Battle of, Creed au Pierrot, with her husband, Louis Dory La Martinier, who was later killed by the French. She made a great impression on her compatriots, with her fearlessness and courage. She was said to use the long rifle, to snipe on the French soldiers below, with a skill, that all the men applauded. She also boosted the morales of her colleagues, with her fierce bravery, and motivational speeches. When not fighting, Marie Jean nursed her injured comrades. She allocated water from her scarce water supply, to parched and dying troops, with a silver serving spoon, that hung from her sash on a fine chain. After the revolution, it is rumored, that she was involved in a relationship with Emperor Jean-Jacques Dessalines, 
who admired her courage and bravery. But their relationship was never confirmed. As a bonus, I would like to mention the Dahomey warrior, Victoria Abdarya Toyamantu, from the Kingdom of Dahomey, which is modern-day Benin. She was a mentor, confidant, and friend to the Emperor Jean-Jacques Dessalines throughout his whole life. Mantu was a skilled warrior, midwife, and healer, who organized several rebellions and was never caught. Before her death, she was crowned Duchess of the North by the Emperor himself, Jean-Jacques Dessalines. Number 1. Cecile Fadiman. Cecile is responsible for organizing the famous Bois Cayman Voodoo ceremony, which was arguably the starting point of the Haitian Revolution. Cecile Fadiman was the daughter of an enslaved African woman, and a white Frenchman, the Prince of Corsica. In August 1791, Fadiman presided over a ceremony, at the Bois Cayman in the role of Mambo, together with priest Duddy Boekman. Boekman and Cecile exhorted the listeners, to take revenge against their French oppressors, and cast aside the image of the god of the oppressors. During the priestess' famous speech, an animal was sacrificed in the honor of the black men's deities, and the ultimate oath for freedom was taken. During the ceremony, Cecile Fatiman became possessed by the goddess Arzuli. A week later, 1800 plantations had been destroyed, and 1000 slaveholders killed. The revolution has begun. Cecile Fatiman was able to witness the end of the revolution. She was reported to have lived to the age of 112.